A little over five years ago, Ram seriously raised the bar in the full-size pickup truck segment when they introduced the all-new fifth generation Ram 1500 all the way back in 2018. Now, as you guys know, in this space, the Ram has consistently been either number two or number three in the sales race, right behind, of course, the bestseller, the Ford F-Series. However, because there are new products showing up in this space all the time, it looks like Ram is finally ready to respond with a new product of their own. This right here is the heavily refreshed 2025 Ram. Ram 1500 and this new luxury trim level called the Tungsten. As you guys know, it got some light styling updates front and rear. It's got an all new powertrain under the hood, replacing the old Hemi V8. And it has a new interior with the latest version of Chrysler's Uconnect 5 head unit. So today we're actually out here in Austin, Texas to finally get behind the wheel of the new Ram. And the big question I want answered, has the company made enough changes to their best-selling pickup truck to keep this model fresh? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the light exterior styling changes that Ram has made for 2025, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing because really the big story for this model year is the fact that Ram has gotten rid of the old 5.7 liter Hemi V8. In fact, basically all the V8s have been replaced because the Hellcat engine is also no more. In its place are two versions of a three liter twin turbocharged Hurricane straight six. If you guys remember our review on the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, this is essentially the same motor uh, in this powertrain or in this trim level that we're showing you, this is the high output. It's known as the SST, which stands for straight six turbo. Um, it's a three liter double overhead cam, twin turbocharged aluminum block and head uh, inline six. So if you're gonna replace the V8, an inline six is definitely the engine that you wanna go with. Uh, and Ram basically says in this application, the high output version, we'll do a separate video of the standard output version. It makes 540 horsepower. That's right, 540 horsepower from just three liters. That's basically 180 horsepower per liter and it also has 521 pound-feet of torque. Now, if you guys are also looking at the Grand Wagoneer L, that actually, that same engine made 510 horsepower. So Ram says to get more power, they essentially increased the engine speed. They also turned up the wick on the boost pressure. The max boost pressure from the twin turbos is 28 PSI, which again is a healthy amount. And this essentially makes the Ram one of the most powerful you know, engines that you're gonna find in the half ton uh, segment. This has more power versus the hybrid version, of course, of the Toyota Tundra. The Power Boost F-150 is, is less powerful. And of course, the GMCs and the Sierras with the 6.2 liter V8, this has more power. It all goes out through an eight speed automatic transmission. It's of course the ZF transmission with your choice of between either rear wheel drive or several different four wheel drive systems. This tungsten trim that I'm showing you comes standard with their electronic on-demand four wheel drive system, which offers a low and a high range, of course. If you guys want something like a locking rear diff, you can also go for the Rebel version. That's a separate review, of course. Sadly, we don't have final fuel economy estimates just yet of this powertrain. Now, if you guys are looking at the old V8s with the e-torque mild hybrid system, that would get like around 19 MPG, MPG combined. Obviously, Ram is gonna be targeting more for this model, so I'm hoping hoping that we see like a number like 20 MPG combined. The one thing I'm surprised about, however, is this powertrain is not a mild hybrid. That's something that we got in terms of the old V8, which was their e-torque system. You can still get an e-torque 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6. That's the base engine making 305 horsepower. But Ram says it just wasn't necessary for this application. The company also claims towing capacity, max towing capacity is a little over 12,000 pounds. This will also carry a maximum of 2,300 pounds of payload in the bed. It's not gonna do that, of course, on this trim because this is the high trim. And sadly, we don't have curb weight figures just yet. The old Ram with the V8 was like around 6,000 pounds. I'd estimate this is gonna be obviously a couple hundred pounds more. The company also wasn't ready to talk about a zero to 60 time, but we'll talk about that when we get this truck out on the road. But let's go ahead and close up this hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, first of all, if you guys are looking at this truck and thinking to yourself, uh, it doesn't really look all that different, well, that's because it's a very light refresh, but Ram does have several different looks depending on the trim that you're also taking a look at. This model here is the new fully loaded tungsten trim. So this now slots above the limited. I think there's still other five or six other trims to choose from. You can see the tungsten has its own version of the corporate Ram grill. Now this grill in general got a little bit larger this year. You can see the Ram script got a lot larger as well. It's got chrome, of course, going around the actual grill itself. Uh, which goes, looks good with the bright white exterior color. The Ram logo has also been lifted up slightly and you can see there's this kind of like this new area here that kind of reminds me a little bit of the Ram TRX grill 
uh, if I remember correctly from the pre-refresh model. The grille itself has this really nice hood bulge, of course, uh, to make room for that straight six engine. Uh, the engine bay itself, uh, Ram says, didn't really need too much accommodation to fit the straight six. You can see the headlights are also now full LED. So even if you go for the base Tradesman trim, you're gonna get LED headlights. In the past, the Tradesman and the Bighorn trim uh, had halogen headlights. So on the... Um, Tungsten trim here, you can see it has an updated projector style LED, where it also has this really nice feature where if you have the key fob on you or if you lock or unlock the truck, if you push the lock button, you can see it actually does an animation sequence, like a goodbye sequence, where it does this cool little dance to basically say goodbye to you. If you unlock the truck, it also will do a welcome sequence to kind of show again that it's welcoming you to your Ram truck. It's a nice little detailed touch that a lot of luxury brands are doing. So it's great to see, you know, Ram including that little touch. The headlights also are adaptive. They swivel either 15 degrees, depending on, you know, what direction you have the steering wheel turn. So again, a nice upscale feature. Down here, you can also see there are some premium LED fog lights. They kind of have like a triple LED design that is unique to the tungsten trim, along with the integrated parking sensors. You have cameras surrounding the vehicle. And then this right here is the radar sensor for the adaptive cruise control, which now all Rams come standard with the full speed range adaptive cruise control. On the higher trims, you can also get a highway driving assist, a hands-free highway driving assist, which I'm hoping that I'll be able to show you guys later on in the video. Now, moving around the side profile of the truck, the Ram is still available with multiple cab configurations. The base configuration is a quad cab. On this trim, you can only get it with the full, four full-size doors, which is a crew cab. You can also take your pick between either a short bed, which is a five foot seven inch long bed, or a longer bed, which is a six foot four inch bed. So I like the fact that Ram still offers the longer bed with the crew cab configuration. You can see um, the wheels on this particular truck. These are a massive 22 inch wheel that's standard on the tungsten trim. It's wrapped in a 285 by 45 R22 inch tire. You can see you've got these massive brakes. The wheels themselves, they have a unique design to the tungsten. Personally, I'm not really quite the biggest fan of the design of the wheels, but let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. The Ram also continues to be one of the only trucks on the market that offers a full four corner air suspension, which is standard on this particular trim here. It gives you the ability to raise the truck up to four inches. So the lowest uh, ride height is gonna have around 6.7 inches of ground clearance. Jack it all the way up to its off-road setting. On the Rebel, for example, you'll have like around 10.7 inches. So again, very unique feature. No other truck in the segment offers a full four corner air suspension. I think Toyota does a rear air suspension, but that is only, of course, on certain trims. Other Rams, if you don't go for the air suspension, will have a coil spring setup. You'll have an independent front and you'll have a um, solid axle at the back. That's kind of the norm when you're looking at a truck in this segment. You can see the mirrors, they are power folding. They have an integrated turn signal. They're chrome accented on this particular trim here. There's also more chrome along the actual door trim, the window trim. There's a big panoramic glass roof, which is standard on this trim as well. It's like a $1,500 upcharge on the pre-refresh model on other trims of the vehicle. And then if you open the door, you can see this trim also comes with these power deploying running boards, which is also a nice touch to help shorter drivers like myself get into this big uh, beastly truck. And then over here, looking at the side profile, you can see the Ram is also one of the only vehicles that offers this little storage area on both sides of the beds. They call this a Ram box and you can see it's lockable. If you wanna open up this area, you can see right now the vehicle is locked so I can't open it. But if I wanna unlock it, pick up my hotel key card. Uh, you can see, open that up. It actually has space to fit your tools or uh, your backpack, for example. It's a really nice storage area where you can lock and secure some things. Obviously it does take up some space in the actual bed, but this is a really nice lockable area for those of you who are looking for a little bit more storage. Now looking over at the rear of the truck, you can see on this side, there's no step, but I'll show you the step on the other side. The back end also got a slight refresh. You can see the taillights have been slightly updated. There's this new big Ram script just to let everybody know that you're driving a Ram truck just don't call it a Dodge. They've been calling it a Ram since 2009. And then of course you also have this tungsten badge, uh, which I imagine Ram will probably offer like a, a blackout um, emblem package if you guys would prefer as, a, as opposed to the Chrome. I'm not really the biggest fan of the Chrome. You can see you have your usual seven pin trailer connector here with all the wiring harnesses. There's also some additional connectors here to hook up cameras and sensors and whatnot for your trailers. Um, this vehicle here, I don't have the final tow configuration of this particular tungsten, but I imagine it's probably going to be around eight to 9,000 pounds whenever Ram has the final numbers for us. You can see it still has a true dual exhaust system. So there's a three inch pipe at the back. Uh, Ram says that they've tuned the sound of this truck to also be a little bit more throaty versus the Grand Wagoneer. So let's go ahead and fire it up. You guys can hear how it sounds.
So obviously it has that really nice straight stick snarl. It's not quite as loud as I wanted it to be, but Ram says this is part of a core trim level. There should be a sport oriented version coming out called RHO, which is kind of like a TRX replacement without the supercharged V8. That should have a, a throatier sound to it. Now, over here on this side, I mentioned earlier, there's this nice little pop out step. So if I come over here, and push that down. This basically allows you to kick that down and, and help shorter drivers like myself get into the actual uh, bed, which is a nice touch. And then the, the other new feature this year is the fact that you can now get a power opening and closing tailgate. So you can basically use it from the key fob here. You can basically just push and hold that. It'll electrically fold down the tailgate. And then you can also just push a button over here and that will also close the tailgate. So that's a really great feature to have. I think Ford kind of did it first on the F-150, but I'm really happy to see that Ram is kind of including that. You can also still get the multifunction tailgate. However, if you get that, you're not gonna have the big Ram script at the back because you can't really have that when the tailgate opens up kind of uh, in half where it allows you to open up in several different ways. You can see this particular one that I'm showing you has the soft three-way ton three fold tonneau cover. It also has kind of like a little bed divider over here. You have this in-bed or spray in bed liner, which is nice. And then I know you can't really see much in here because it's a little dark. There are some tie down areas. There's some LED lighting and Ram now offers like a, a power on board system where you can basically plug your know, exterior, th exterior things like your power tools and whatnot at your job site. And Ram says that the truck will supply up to two kilowatts of power. Two kilowatts is not a lot. The gas engine essentially has to come on to run those accessories. But remember, this is not a mild hybrid like you got in the old V8, which was an e-torque. So two kilowatts is about on par with what Ford offers and just an EcoBoost F-150, but it's nice to see that Ram is offering a feature like that because something that you can't get, or that's something that you can't get on even like the hybrid version of the Toyota Tundra. So with the ultra luxury tungsten trim now sitting at the top end of the Ram hierarchy, let's go ahead and talk about the interior because this is where Ram really spent the big bucks, especially if you're looking to replace your European luxury, you know, sedan or something like that. Now, before we get inside, let me show you guys the new key fob. You can see this key is kind of unique to the tungsten trim. It's a bigger key. It has kind of like the tungsten badging with the knurled finish that you're also going to find on the interior. The key fob has a ton of buttons on. You can see it has buttons for lock, unlock, remote start. You can also open and close the tailgate. You can raise and lower the suspension, use the panic function. If you don't want to carry around this big blocky key, Ram also offers a new phone as a key function where you can use your smartphone as a key and you can also use a digital key card, which again will allow you to not have to carry around this massive key fob. Now, before I get inside the truck, let me go show you, let me go ahead and show you guys the door panel. And you can see Ram really pioneered the ultra luxury interior when they introduced the fifth generation Ram. I didn't think that they would be able to improve on that, but you can see clearly they have. The tungsten trim has this beautiful contrasting leather stitching and real leather on the upper portion. You have that more of that knurled metal trim along with some genuine carbon fiber. Uh, there's metal, it looks like metal trim accents for the door handles, although I must admit it feels more like plastic to me. It looks nice. You can see over here, there's nice padded uh, leather over here with the contrasting stitching, more of that metal knurled trim. Down here, it's hard touch plastic, but there's a good amount of storage. You can see your seat controls are now located on the actual door panel. So this is only exclusive to the tungsten trim. And that's because the seats in this model offer 24 way adjustments. They're heated and ventilated. You have two person memory on the driver's side and you also have a massage function, which I'll touch base on in a little bit. The speaker system, this also has their ultra premium Klipsch uh, 24 speaker stereo system. In fact, the audio system Ram says is the most powerful in the segment. It offers almost 1400 watts of power. And like I said, 23 speakers. It sounds incredible if you guys are an audiophile. Ram already had an excellent system in the other trims, which is their 19 speaker Harman Kardon. This 24 speaker essentially takes it to, or 23 speaker, I'm sorry, essentially takes it to the next level. In terms of the pedals, you can see there's a metal axle accented sport pedal that's included when you guys go for the tungsten trim, along with these uh, unique floor mats that have the tungsten badging and more of that contrasting uh, stitching and piping throughout the floor mat. It's just a nice little detailed touch. Now getting inside the interior, you can see it's got those power deploying running board, which, makes, which means getting in and out of the truck for short people like myself a little bit easier. When I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is still built on the same ladder type frame. It's fully boxed, it's very stiff. It has a nice sounding door thunk, although it doesn't offer like a soft close feature, which I kind of hope it would considering the price of this vehicle. As I get in and start the truck up, you can see the start stop button is located right here where you'd expect it to be. 
And the vehicle has a traditional starter noise, and that's because this is not a hybrid or mild hybrid, which I'm a little surprised because the old 5.7 liter Hemi was uh, a mild hybrid because of that e-torque system. Ram says it just wasn't necessary for this new truck. Now, as you can see, as I get inside the interior, for the most part, the layout looks pretty similar to a pre-refresh truck, but the technology and the materials has just been seriously upgraded. Let me first start here with the steering wheel. Now, first of all, the steering wheel itself has been updated. It's got a uh, manual tilt and telescoping adjustment with a good amount of adjustability and range. The one thing I'm surprised, no power adjustments for the tilt and telescoping function. I think they should have included that considering the price point. And then you also have a plethora of screens in this vehicle. So you have a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, which is customizable. You can kind of put your GPS function here. You can also put a traditional gauge display. Uh, you can actually put the map, like I said, a tow page, audio information. This is all customizable and it looks fantastic. Uh, and then over here, you can see if you guys go for a Laramie level two and up trim, you'll get standard under this 14 and a half inch Uconnect 5 touchscreen. You can see it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The screen itself has gotten a huge upgrade in terms of the graphics. The colors are also more intense and more vibrant. The blacks are a little bit blacker. The whites are a little bit whiter. So it just looks like a much more modern screen. The base screen setup is an 8.4 inch screen. That's what you're gonna find essentially on the um, tradesman trim. The 12 inch screen, which is the mid trim is after that. And then this right here is the 14 and a half inch screen. And then new for this year, if you guys go for the Laramie level two and up is going to be a new 10.5 inch passenger display here, a 10.25 inch passenger display. Now from where I'm sitting over here, there's a filter, so I can't even see that screen. But if I go over here, you can see uh, I think Rob is able to show you, you guys here. This screen essentially allows you to kind of show your GPS function to allow you to kind of control the audio information. You can also plug it into an HDMI and stream movies and whatnot. So that's a really a great feature. It looks a little bit small from this side, but when you're on the passenger side, it's definitely a nice touch. In terms of the rest of the materials, this interior is again, going to be able to rival that European luxury sedan that you're trading in because the entire dash, as you can see, is covered in beautiful leather uh, materials. It's got this contrasting copper stitching, which you're probably noticing the color. This is actually called indigo and sea salt. So this is a unique color combination that's only on the tungsten trim. The seats, you can see, uh, they adjust in 24 different ways. They are heated, ventilated, and offer a massage function. And I love this color combination with the indigo and sea salt with the contrast copper stitching. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys like it. You guys better like this color combo because it's the only color combo available when you guys go for the uh, tungsten trim. Now, the one thing I also appreciate with Ram is the fact that there are still a ton of actual hard buttons and knobs. So you can see you've got your dual zone climate control with actual buttons along the side of the screen. You can also go into, into the screen itself to adjust the climate control. Your heated and ventilated seat control is located in the actual screen. The cooled seat function works extremely well. You can also go there and adjust the seats because there's so many ways you can adjust the lumbar and the headrest, which are also power adjustable, the thigh extenders, which are power adjustable. And then going over here, there's a massage function. Now there is a dedicated button here on the door panel. If I just touch that, it does turn on the massage. You can see if you guys have spent some time in the Grand Wagoneer, this massage feature is very similar. It offers five different ways of massage, three different levels of intensity. They're in both the front seats, which again makes for a great you know, driving experience when you guys have this out on the highway and whatnot. It's going to, again, give you that really nice massage. It rivals basically any of the expensive European luxury brands that I've tested. Now, um, the drive or your gear selector is over here. I also like the fact that it's this nice little rotary knob. It also is covered in complete metal controls. It has the same knurled textured finish to it. If I put the truck into reverse, you can see there's your full top down 360 camera. Now, because of the orientation of the screen, sadly, it doesn't take up the entire screen for the camera, but the resolution is fantastic. It's also quick and snappy. You can also do a trailer view. If you want, you can pull up the surround view again. You can go to more camera views. Um, if you guys are planning to go off-roading, that's all very you know, intuitive and very helpful. So again, all that works extremely well. You have volume and tuning knobs here, which I appreciate as well. You can also access a couple of quick buttons here to mute the audio or turn the screen off. Down here, you can see you have your trailer brake controller and it also kind of mimics controls onto the screen itself. So you can kind of adjust you know, the trailer steering from this little knob over here. You can also adjust up and down the air suspension in this truck through that little display and also shows a little graphic there of the truck rising and lowering itself, which again is all very nice. If I go into the apps menu here, you can access a couple of things you know, directly there, go into your categories, go back to here to vehicle. This is where you can adjust all your different vehicle settings. Uh, I'll have to wait until I get one for a full week to show you guys the interior ambient lighting, which I, I won't be able to show you guys on this kind of quick uh, first drive of the truck. The GPS function, as you can see, 
uh, going back to the map display. It's nothing super special. Uh, it's basically just like a Garmin based system here. I'm trying to see if I can get the screen to pop up. There's the GPS. Again, not going to be quite as nice as some of the Google Earth ma like maps that you, you see from some European competitors, but I have a quick fix for that. Just go back to the CarPlay, go to Google Maps here and check that out. It looks fantastic on that 14 and a half inch display, takes up the entire screen. Uh, and it's just very quick, it's very snappy, it's responsive. Now, a couple of other new things over here in the center console area, you can see more of that beautiful, genuine carbon fiber trim. There are two wireless phone charging pads. So you can see on the tungsten trim, RAM gives you one for the driver and for the passenger, it fits my iPhone 14 Pro Max perfectly there. So if you have those big smartphones, it fits perfectly. Over here, you can see there are also six USB charging ports. So you have three USB A's, three USB C's. So there's plenty of charging options. You can see, uh, open that up. You can see there's your cup holders here. There's a little bit more storage over there where you can put your, uh, your keys and whatnot, some uh, storage for loose change. And then you can see along the center console, there's also beautiful leather stitching and more of that quilted leather uh, going throughout the cabin, which by the way, this leather is called Natura Plus. So it's an actual genuine leather. And it, I must say it's one of the softest leather that I've felt in any production vehicle. And it also has a really nice expensive smell in this truck, which I appreciate. Uh, down here on the center console, you can see there's a big tungsten badge here that also shows your your VIN uh, number for the truck. It kind of makes the truck feel a little bit more special because Ram, again, wants this to sit at the very top of the, the family. Uh, you can see open that up. There's a big center console storage area where you can essentially put a lot of things in there. There's even some nice little Easter eggs. There's a divider there. And you can also kind of slide this forward and back so you can increase the space over here or give you more of a center console storage area. So really nice, you know, flexibility. The one thing this truck, however, doesn't have is like that table that folds out. That's something that the F-150 gives you. But I have to say there's a ton of storage in this truck. The drive mode selector I also want to quickly touch base on. It's actually located here on the steering wheel. So if I push that button over here, you can cycle between an automatic, a snow, an off-road mode, a sport mode, which I'll try later on in the driving scene. There's also a tow function. You can see it also will start affecting the, the air suspension. It'll move it up and down based on what drive mode you're in. You can also manually control the eight-speed auto from here via these little buttons. No paddles on the wheel. I would have liked that. And then you can see over here on the steering wheel, that is actually a little camera sensor to make sure that I'm looking at the road. So that is for the highway driving assist, the hands-free drive, highway driving assist. As long as the car or the truck can see that you're looking at the road, it allows on certain roads for basically full hands-free access, all via controlled via this button over here, where you basically just turn on the adaptive cruise control. So overall, the interior of this truck definitely raises the bar even more. I mean, I think that Ram has really made basically the limited truck even nicer with nicer materials. You can see there's even leather around the airbag cover. Uh, and then over above me here, I forgot to mention there are it's a suede material on the headliner. It's even covering the uh, sun visors as well. You have LED map lighting, and then you have this massive panoramic glass roof. So this roof uh, also vents, and it also opens up to let in more air. So again, that's a feature that you actually don't even find on a GMC Sierra or a Chevrolet Silverado. So Ram was one of the first. You can see it actually allows me to open it up even larger, basically over the two front seats, which is a nice touch. And you can also open and close the rear window back here. So there's a button right here where I can slide that open. It's not quite as cool as the full slide down window that you get in the Toyota Tundra, but I have to admit Ram seriously set the bar high back in 2019. And with this 2025 tungsten trim, they've risen that bar even further. And I have to say, I'm very, very impressed. This is basically as nice as a lot of those expensive luxury sedans from Europe that you're probably trading in to get this thing. Now, moving to the back seat of the Ram 1500, you probably also noticed this vehicle is the crew cab configuration. It only comes on the tungsten trim and Ram essentially has the biggest back seat in the segment. In fact, at 45 inches of legroom, just, just barely under 45 inches of legroom, this has between two to three more inches of legroom versus a lot of the competition. If you guys go for the quad cab model, you'll have roughly 35 inches of legroom. So still very usable, but again, this is basically almost like a limousine like back seat. And the Ram also includes some nice little touches. First of all, it just just like a lot of other trucks, you can lift the seat back up to allow you to kind of create this flatter floor area, which is nice. And then you can see it also does the same thing on the passengers or the yeah, passenger side. There's a little bit of storage over here. And then if you look underneath the floor, it's also on Rob's side over there. You can actually lift this up and find this little hidden storage compartment, which is probably a really great place to store your pistol because we are in America and we're here in Texas. Uh, but overall, you can really great storage solutions back here. And the Ram also offers this really cool feature where you can essentially sit in the truck and you can also slide the seat and recline it. So again, this is a cool little touch. I'm surprised other truck manufacturers haven't copied this. Again, it allows you to basically give a slight recline, but let me go ahead and get back here and show you guys what the space is like. Now, first of all, when I get back here and shut the door, 
door still has that solid sounding thunk. And then even the materials back here are still basically as nice as the front. So you have the same beautiful real leather stitching along the upper door panels, more of that carbon fiber, more of that quilted leather. Uh, you have aluminum covers here for the Klipsch audio system, which again has 23 speakers, padded area over here, more of that textured neural finish. The window controls, they are one touch for all four, which they have a nice high quality feel to them. They're actually lined in, um, are accented in metal. The one thing I'm noticing is missing is no retractable shades. I would have liked to see that. You can find that on something like the Toyota Tundra. I'm surprised Ram kind of missed that little detail. A couple other things you're noticing. First of all, this is where I have the seat to drive and look at the space back here. I can literally stretch out and just find all this space and I can also pull this and recline the seat a little bit if I'd like. So I can kind of sit back here and take a nap. I can still cross my legs. Now keep in mind, I'm five foot seven. I'm not the tallest person, but this is a great feature. So I'm really shocked that other brands haven't copied this. Now in terms of an, uh, other you know features back here, you can see you do have rear seat air vents. You have a little bit of storage here for your cup holders. You have uh, four more USB charging ports. And Ram was one of the first brands that did heated and ventilated second row seats. You can now get this on something like the Toyota Tundra but I don't think the GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate offers that feature. You also have a household power outlet here, which is a nice touch again. And then you can see here on the door panels or on the seat backs, you have uh, basically leather covering the entire seat. So it, you don't have to deal with cheap plastic back here. You have two storage pockets and you can see here, the Klipsch audio system actually has two speakers on the actual seat back. So there's a reason why the sound quality in this vehicle sounds fantastic. You also have root speakers mounted in the roof of this truck, again, to give you, you know, that immersive sound experience. And then if you fold this down here, you can see uh, this allows you to get two more cup holders over here. You have a little storage compartment, of course, uh, a little bit of additional storage over here. Uh, and again, when you have four people or when you have two people in the back here, it's basically as nice as the front seat. But remember this truck is so wide that you can easily fit three people across and you'll have a completely flat floor here. So again, one of the reasons why people buy these trucks is to use as family vehicles. And the Ram continues to be a class leader here with the biggest back seat that you're gonna find in the segment. So here we are finally behind the wheel of the heavily revised 2025 Ram. This model here is the tungsten trim, which means we have the high output uh, three liter twin turbo straight six. Now this engine delivers 540 horsepower and 521 pound feet of torque. That is an insane amount of power considering uh, the segment it competes in. Let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise. <laughs> Wow, that is uh, definitely potent. 4.78 seconds. <laughs> and that's pretty much on a level surface. And Rob over there is sitting there laughing because uh, this thing actually is fast. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, that time is practically identical to the last Jeep Grand Wagoneer L with the same engine, but it had a little bit less power, 510 horsepower in the Jeep. Ram did not tell us what the curb weight is of this truck, however, so. We're kind of left with speculation. The pre-refresh version with the Hemi V8, that did that had around or that weighed around 6,000 pounds. So I expect this truck to at least weigh 6,000 pounds, but it's probably heavier, honestly. I mean, the Grand Wagoneer L was around 6,400 pounds. So still, 4.7 is insanely fast time. In fact, it's about a second faster than all of the competition that this truck competes with, basically, that have, you know, hybrid powertrain or they have that twin turbo V6. You can also get a V8 still. I think the last GMC Sierra with the 6.2 V8 that I tested was like right around 5.9 seconds. So. Clearly Ram has the speed king with this truck and I'm loving it. I also love the uh, sound of this engine. Now it is a little bit muted. I kind of was hoping that Ram would do something to the exhaust to make it louder. It's got a true dual exhaust system with three inch uh, polished tips. And when you put your foot down, it has a nice sound. Uh, the transmission is the eight speed torque flight automatic. Uh, it's basically uh, a ZF automatic. And it's a great partner for the engine. It, it has smooth shifts. It's really responsive. It's down two gears compared to the competitors, but I actually prefer the eight speed because I think eight is still a really good, perfect amount of gears. You don't really necessarily need to go past eight. Uh, I just think it starts hunting a little bit too much for gears. But the one thing I'm noticing right away with this Ram, this tungsten trim, we're on these 22 inch wheels and the ride in this thing is just luxury car smooth. I mean, it's the only truck in the segment that has the four corner air suspension. You still have, or you have coil springs, but you also have air springs when you have the air suspension. It's still a live axle in the back, but 
This rides so well. The fact that we've got these low profile tires doesn't really affect the truck whatsoever. Uh, in terms of like sporty driving feel, I mean, this is a big truck. So this model we're driving has the five foot seven inch bed uh, and it's a crew cab configuration. It feels practically identical to the last Grand Wagoneer that I drove, which doesn't surprise me. They're built off of the same body on frame architecture. Um, the, the vehicle itself is relatively easy to drive. You can see out of the front, the side really well. I'm also sitting here getting a massage and this tungsten trim, it's the first Ram to get a massage feature, although you can get the massage on the lower trims as well. Uh, I believe if you go for at least a Laramie Longhorn and the limited trim along with the tungsten, uh, and you can also option in on the Laramie level two option package. But I mean, if you guys are looking for something to replace your luxury vehicle, Ram essentially raised the bar when the fifth generation came out in 2019, and it's hard to imagine, but they've basically raised it again. Uh, and it's, you know, it's hard to find a vehicle, another truck in this segment that has just as nice of an interior. Uh, in terms of quietness also, uh, that straight six engine really doesn't make much noise, even when you start pushing it. There's also very little wind noise, very little road noise. The visibility out of the truck is also good. I can see out of the front, the side, really nice. I like the big, uh, mirrors. These are not the optional tow mirrors that you can get, but you can see it also has blind spot monitoring and it also has you know a little blind spot mirror as well to kind of aid when you guys are towing. I also love the digital camera rear view mirror, uh, which is nice. The new uh, infotainment system in this vehicle also, the 14 and a half inch display, I think is a good size for the rest of the dashboard. I personally can't see the 10.25 inch display, but uh, Rob, will it turn on this time? <laughs> it was having some issues turning on earlier. So I yeah, I think Rob just broke it. it these, these are very early pre-production trucks. So uh, we'll, we won't you know, ding too many points off of Ram for some of the technology not working. But again, there's a lot of technology in this truck. Ram claims that you have the most real estate of screens in this vehicle. And you know, I'm sitting here looking at a screen, a screen, a screen, a screen. So there's four screens there already. And I'm also sitting here getting a massage. So really, really nice overall presentation with the, the tungsten trim. Obviously, it better be nice considering the price range of this truck. But the other thing that Ram also added this year is high, Active Highway Driving Assist Plus, basically. This is their version of GM Super Cruise and Ford's Blue Cruise. And we're gonna go ahead and see if we can queue over to a uh, highway driving scene to show you how that works. Uh, but overall, Ram says that it allows you for true hands-free driving for hundreds of miles, depending, of course, on the roadways you're on. So in addition to all the new tech that Ram gave this truck, this is also the first vehicle to get their advanced hands-free highway driving assist, which means on supported roads, this system will essentially allow for total hands-free operation. There's a camera right here above the steering wheel that watches your face to make sure that you're paying attention. The system also offers active lane change assist functions when the road is actually clear, it'll change lanes for you automatically. And it also will actively steer you in the lane, keep you centered even around curves. So as you can see right now, we have the system active. We have it on the driver information display that shows that it's hands-free. It's very clear in the sense that it's allowing you to go hands-free. If you're on an unsupported road, it'll tell you that it's unsupported. It'll tell you to also put your hands on the wheel. Thankfully, unlike some systems, however, it'll still allow for uh, the active lane keep assist and lane centering, even though it's in an unsupported road. So as you can see, we're going around this corner here, it's keeping us in the lane. I typically don't like to trust systems during these situations, but I have to say it's working pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and signal right here. And as you can see, it's going to check the blind spot and then it'll actively switch over lanes. Uh, hell. <laughs> I'm like, it's fine. We got some clip in there and Rob will just have to do it. Sorry, Rob, technical difficulties because GoPros are shit. All right, so now that we had a chance to sample the high output version of the straight six and drive the vehicle out and its active highway hands-free driving assist feature, I thought I'd switch over to this Rebel trim, which does have the standard output version of this engine. So that means we have 420 horsepower, 469 pound-feet of torque. I got zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds in the high output version earlier today. And let's go ahead and see what we can get in this standard output version. It's certainly no slouch. This has more horsepower than the old 5.7 liter Hemi V8. So we have it in sport mode now. It's in four-wheel drive auto. We'll brake torque it. Oof. <laughs> this thing feels so quick off the line with that torque. 
All right, we just got zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds, 5.2, which means the standard output version of this truck only is about a half a second slower than the high output version. That's impressive. I mean, that time is still quicker than basically the 6.2 liter V8 that I tested in a Chevrolet Silverado. It's quicker versus a Toyota Tundra iForce Max with the hybrid powertrain. It's also, I believe, quicker still than an F-150 EcoBoost. Now, the PowerBoost F-150, I haven't had a chance to test one of those in a while, but I have to say that time is very impressive. And basically, just like the high-output version, the standard output version has plenty of power. I mean, it's a twin-turbo inline-six, so it's a single-scroll mono-turbocharger. Uh, I actually want to see where I can get here really quick without brake-torquing it. We'll just floor it from a stop. The start stop is kind of annoying, but definitely doesn't feel quite as fast, but man, that eight speed shifts really nicely. 5.5 seconds there. Now that's with it more going slightly downhill, but still that's just basically flooring it from a stop and it has plenty of power. It's got a smooth eight speed, which just puts the engine right in the meat of the power van. It just sounds good. It feels good. It doesn't have quite as much noise as I would like it to have but I suspect the aftermarket or perhaps Mopar will fix that at some point to give us even more of that throaty or straight six sound. Obviously, it's not gonna replace the you know grunt, grunty noises you heard from the old Hemi V8, although the Hemi, if I remember correctly, wasn't quite as loud as I wanted it to be anyways. You had to go for the 6.4 liter Hemi, which you couldn't even get in the Ram 1500 at the time. So again, 5.2 to 5.5 seconds is very impressive for just the standard output engine. Again, if this is all too much power for you, you can also go and buy the base 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. I personally would skip it, uh, especially considering the power of this, of this inline six twin turbo engine. But let's try it here one more time. We'll just floor it from a stop. God, I love this pull of this engine. Just wonderful. 5.7 seconds there. So that's with it more level ground. Um, so yeah, so 5.2, if you brake torque it, you shave about a half a second off if you don't brake torque it. So that time I think is very impressive, especially when you consider that this engine has more horsepower and torque than the old V8 and it should get better fuel efficiency. How much better fuel efficiency? I don't know because I don't have final fuel efficiency uh, numbers just yet. However, if I start cycling through the drive mode here, the trip computer is showing 11 and a half MPG. So we can't really take that into account because this is a very early pre-production truck. Pre-production truck, it's been driven by, you know, journalists all the time and it's been driven hard. But overall, I'm really impressed. I mean, the interior comfort levels, the visibility in this truck, the standard safety equipment, and now the engine, this is now the speed king in the segment. And remember, this isn't even like like a replacement for the Hellcat V8. So I don't know if Ram's gonna do something to replace the old supercharged Hellcat V8, but for those of you who, again, complained about the old Ram not having an, as much power as its rivals or being slower, clearly these uh, twin turbo straight six motors have fixed that. So with nearly 450,000 units sold in 2023, the Ram 1500 is the best-selling vehicle within the Stellantis portfolio. So obviously a new version of this truck is a very important proposition. And after spending some time driving the 2025 Tungsten, this fully loaded top of the line version, it's pretty easy to see that Ram really focused on a lot of key areas of improvement here. First of all, the engine of this truck. As you guys saw, zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds for the high output version is just insane. It's about a second, almost a second faster than most of its rivals, including something like the Ford F-150 Raptor, which is kind of crazy to think, the non-supercharged Raptor R, of course. In terms of the ride and handling, the air suspension still gives this truck, for me at least, the best ride quality that you're gonna find in this segment, especially when you're dealing with 22-inch wheels. Most trucks, they tend to have that jittery, bouncy feeling, unless you have something in the bed, not so with the Ram, so that's one of the reasons why the air suspension is a big plus for me. Uh, the interior also got a huge upgrade. It's still one of the nicest interiors, actually, on this trim here, it's probably the nicest interior that you're gonna find in the segment. And you're gonna be paying for that because we'll talk about the pricing in just a moment. Uh, in terms of the back seat, it's still huge. The bed also carries a lot of stuff in the back, although we don't have final payload and tow figures just yet of this particular tungsten trim. I also suspect it'll probably be right around the class average in terms of towing capacity, in terms of payload capacity. Really, what gives the tungsten you know, that extra special feeling is the upgrades that Ram has given it in terms of the interior. It just feels extremely luxurious. It feels well put together, even though these are early pre-production trucks. 
and you're gonna be paying for that in the long run because if you guys are looking to get your hands on the Ram 1500, Ram says that they should be showing up at your local Ram dealer by the end of March. So basically you're gonna have to wait a little about around a month and a half. And pricing, they haven't announced finalized pricing, but they did have kind of a range. So if you guys want to get the, go for the base tradesman with the quad cabin 4x2 with the Pentastar V6, that's going to start at around $40,000. Now that price range is only about a thousand more versus the 2024 version. And Ram basically says they've included about $2,500 worth of additional equipment. That's all standard. So that's a ton of value there. If you guys want to step it up to the Bighorn in quad cab 4x2 configuration, that's going to cost around $45,000. If you guys want the Laramie trim, with crew cab and 4x2, that's gonna start at around $60,000. The Laramie trim uh, is the trim that'll come standard, I believe, with the, um, the twin turbocharged inline six. The base tradesman and the Bighorn are gonna have the Pentastar V6 as standard. Now, if you guys wanna step it up even further into the luxury scale, there's the Laramie and the Laramie Longhorn, or the, there's the Laramie Longhorn and the limited trim, which are gonna start at around 75 grand. This truck here, however, Ram says it's gonna start at around $87,000. I know 87 grand is a stupid amount of money, However, the last GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate that I tested was around $85,000. And I have to say the tungsten basically comes incredibly well equipped. There are really no options to add besides I believe a technology package that rolls in that heads up display, which I don't know what the final pricing of that. So again, all in you're looking at nearly $90,000. Is this truck worth $90,000? I'm not entirely sure. Until I spend a full week with this thing, I'll have to do a, a follow-up video whenever Ram sends me one for a full week. But I have to say, if you guys are looking for the ultimate luxury half-ton truck with all the technology, all the the power and all the tech features that you could possibly want, you should definitely put this new Ram 1500 Tungsten at the very top of your list. With all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2025 Ram 1500 Tungsten. I also want to thank Rob from behind the camera, who's always working extremely hard to edit and shoot these videos. If you're also looking to see the latest trucks I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.